In this experiment, we're going to have a look at the combustion of propane. We've got propane in the gas line here, and we can proceed to show its combustion, as you can see there. And that tells us the tube is full of gas. And we're now going to take that gas and fill this plastic bottle with it. So I've filled it with water, and so we can proceed to, to bubble the gas uh, underwater. And as you can probably start to see, the the gas runs into the container quickly, displacing the water downwards, and um, we'll fill up fill up with a, uh, a container full of propane in a minute or three. And there we should be just about there now. Yeah, it looks like it. So we'll take that out and we have a container full of propane, uh, nothing else, because we had water in there, the water's now gone. So we'll try and burn that. Now remember propane is a gas heavier than air, so to do the combustion we allow the gas to run out, and it burns quite nicely there, nothing very spectacular, quite an ordinary combustion. Okay, C3H8 is the propane, and if we're going to burn it, we're going to react it with oxygen. And with a bit of luck, that should produce two gaseous products, carbon dioxide and H2O. Now, just a moment ago, we only took propane. We did not add any oxygen at all. So let's repeat the experiment by adding oxygen to the propane and see how the combustion goes. Okay, in the same way as before, we are now going to put in propane, but this time we will only half fill the bottle with propane because the equation says that we should have propane and oxygen. So we've got um, propane in there, and uh, we'll go down to about halfway, and that's looking a little bit like halfway, maybe a smidgen more. Okay, there's propane. And what we'll do now is, from a gas cylinder in which I have oxygen, we'll bubble some oxygen in there as well, until we fill the thing right up. Now we all know that combustion involves oxygen, and so this time we're adding the oxygen right into the container, and very shortly the rest of it will be filled with oxygen, which I think is the case now. So what we have now is this bottle, in which we have propane and oxygen, about half of each. So we had about half propane, half oxygen. So we'll have a look at the combustion of that, but I'm just a little, little bit concerned, and perhaps I'll put these on uh, and we'll try this out. So we'll do the same as before, propane and oxygen, and ignite it with the flame here. Okay, you'll have noticed that when we put the propane and the oxygen together, the reaction was somewhat different uh, to what we did the first time without adding propane in. However, if we look at this equation, you'll notice there are three carbons there, and there's only one there. So we have to balance this equation to put a three in there. Now, if you look over here, we've got eight hydrogens, and over here we only have two. So a four in there will sort that little problem out. So we've now got four hydrogens, or eight hydrogens rather, four H2s on one side, and we've got eight on the other side. We've got three carbons here, we've got three carbons there. The only thing that we still have to sort out is the oxygens. Now there are three lots of two oxygens there, that's six, and another four. So that's ten altogether on this side. We only have two here, so we put a five in place there. So what that tells us now is that to react propane according to this equation, we've got to put in five times as much oxygen. So we'll try that now in our final experiment. Okay, this time we're going to put in just a small amount of propane. In fact, quite a small amount of propane, only up to about there. You may be able to see a black mark, but you may not. So it's quite a small amount of propane, and we're going to add to it about 
five times as much oxygen if we can sort that out. So we'll bubble that in and we'll go down to the next black mark so we can get that to about there maybe just a little bit more okay so what we've got in there now is we've got one part of propane and about five parts of oxygen we'll suck in a little bit of air just to uh, dilute the mixture a little bit and so we have now a ratio of propane to oxygen, which is roughly 5 to 1, which the equation tells us. Now to deal with this experiment and to light it, we're going to be a little bit more careful and I'm going to place this thing into a launching device. So we have a tube here, we'll pop this into there um, because I do have a feeling that the reaction is going to be better this time and because I'm so close to it, I'm going to use these this time and we're going to use a uh, wick to, to light this and so we'll proceed to, to light this particular material as soon as we're pretty much ready. As you can see that reaction was much more effective and by following the balanced equation of ratio of five oxygens to one propane in this particular case we got maximum energy and we got a reaction which went at a very impressive rate. So balancing equations is always important in chemistry.